Personally, uh, remarried, I had five children, 26, 24, 14, 11, and 18. And uh, we lived a little bit north of here. Uh, professionally speaking, I started as a high school science teacher. I taught physics in uh, Highland, uh, Nevada Highland School. I was there for a couple of years. And then I went and taught uh, uh, science at Wadsworth High School. At most schools, I coached uh, track and football. I taught physics at the high school level and some other. I taught remedial science, general science, honor science, the whole, the whole gamut. And one day, I was in the hallway, and the assistant principal came out to me, and he said, Jeff, have you ever thought about doing what I do for a living? And with all sarcasm aside, I said, John, I have no idea what you do for a living. And he said, I spend more time with the kids who need more time. And it kind of hit me, kind of gave me tingles, and it still does when I remember the story. I just finished my master's in curriculum instruction, and I went back, and I needed 30 more hours to be an administrator. I knocked that out in a year, and I was blessed to become the assistant principal at the Dine High School. Uh, I was there for two years, and after two years, the principal retired, and I was asked to be the high school principal. Excuse me, it was a pretty exciting time. It was right as they were redoing their high school. So my very first day as, as assistant principal, they took the very first scoop out of the first parking lot, and my last day before I left to be a superintendent in another district, uh, they actually completed the high school. So it was a, a great time to be there. Uh, but I had an opportunity to be a superintendent at Woodbridge Local Schools. And for those of you who don't know what it is, the Blossom Music Center is right in the middle of the district. Um, very diverse community, uh, the, the rich to the rich, the poor to the poor, and quite frankly, not much in the middle in terms of uh, big, big income. Uh, when I was there, I, uh, again, I've been in some multiple districts, and um, when I was there, I, I saw different struggles from, from different students. And um, I grew up on a product of generational poverty, um, and I connected with the needs of the students who uh, had needs that had not been recognized, or at least uh, acknowledged to a degree where uh, work was being done toward removing the obstacles that were created for them. Um, I developed a passion in that area, and I was there for seven years, and I got a call from somebody who I knew and trusted, and he said, Jeff, um, you thought about Parma. Uh, they just failed seven straight levies, they cut everything in the high school, and literally, um, a high school student could not take more than five classes. And when I got there, I found out students, uh, for example, couldn't take math, uh, couldn't take English, because they already had the five classes, and the addition was such financial straits that they could no longer afford some things. Um, so we, we passed the levy, uh, we redistricted the district, did a lot of different things, but it created an opportunity to recreate a school district from the very beginning. We didn't have to stick with the way we had done things before because we literally had nothing left to start for, to, to continue. So we started from scratch and, and built a district based on best practices and research. Um, after things were going very well in, in Parma, uh, someone called up and said, Jeff, <coughs> Uh, there's a uh, Lord of Rain schools, and I've heard of them, but I didn't know much about them. And he said they're in academic distress. Uh, they're already two years in, uh, and they, their superintendent retired. And he said they had the interest. So I pursued that and was offered the job as a superintendent of Lorraine City Schools. And, and so they've been in distress for two years. There are two different laws. I won't get too much into it unless you want to. Um, the first law actually just captured a couple of school districts. It captured Youngstown, who um, everybody in the Athens doors admits the law is aimed at. And they caught Lorraine, and Lorraine didn't see it coming. Uh, they were worried about their fiscal distress, and they tried to recover from that and did, but didn't get out of fiscal, I'm sorry, economic distress. Again, didn't see it coming. Uh, so they were in it for two years. Um, I arrived, and the second law kicked in. <laughs> Actually, it kicked in. Uh, it was introduced. The board meeting was on a Tuesday night, I think. I was hired at 9 o'clock the next morning. The law went into it, when, uh, was passed. And for those of you who don't know, uh, when you pass a law, you have to have several readings so everyone knows what's going on. At the 11th hour, the day before, so 9 o'clock in the morning, the day I was hired, uh, 9 o'clock in the morning, they added 67 pages, I think it was, House Bill 70, you know, to that bill. And so when it was approved the next day, no one even knew what it was, what was happening. So we slowly uncovered what was happening, and it was very clear that uh, for Lorraine to get out of academic distress, the, 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 the old law applied. So Lorraine had to get convert their, their apps and actually D's um, to C's. So we had seven months to go from um, decades of F's and D's to C's and maintain that for two years. So statistically speaking, it was unlikely, uh, but we still did the right things. Uh, we engaged the community, we engaged the staff, we engaged every stakeholder to identify a list of needs. We created that list, we identified best practices to meet those needs, and we did. <coughs> Um, knowing full well what the plan was uh, very early on, um, I had the opportunity to leave. 
and there were some um, super tendencies open at the time that uh, were, um, I got a lot of phone calls. Uh, I promised the board, I promised the city, I promised the community leaders I'd sit down to the end. And I knew exactly what the end would, would entail. Um, a CEO would be named, we knew they were looking at charter school people, the only people they interviewed for the job were charter school people. Um, and I knew that when this person coming in, I mean, common sense dictated that I would be the first one to go, and, and I was. Um, he called me in his office and he said, Jeff, uh, there's confusion in leadership. And I was. Uh, there, uh, people were, people never called me boss, but all of a sudden when he arrived, everybody started calling me boss. Um, and again, I think people meant well, but it was a, a very, very, very stressful time and a horrible thing to watch, not for me personally, but for those around me. Um, and so I was assigned to the ESC and I finished out the year there. And then I took a job with Cleveland Metropolitan Schools as a regional superintendent, and that's where I'm at. So I think that's a longer version of my short story. 